The guinea hens of Horseshoe Ranch are greeting the day long before the sun comes up. At the same time, the Wildlife Contracts branch of Arizona Game and Fish is preparing to head out in search of herds of pronghorn that live in the area. They want to place GPS collars on certain pronghorn so they can track their movements in relation to the highway and other obstacles that have cut off their natural range. The issue is called connectivity. Connectivity is, uh, is essentially the ability of the animals, uh, of a population of animals, to move throughout its range uh, that it needs to survive in the long term. So that would include uh, areas for food, water, and shelter in uh, both their summer and winter range if they happen to differ. So connectivity is essentially the study of looking at those movements between the resources and within their home range and looking at the barriers that essentially we've put up uh, that, that may break those resources apart. The most difficult part of the operation is safely capturing the pronghorn so the collars can be attached. Crews on the ground radio into the coordination center when they spot a herd in the designated area, in this case, Game Management Unit 21. Then the helicopter is sent in with a crew of three, including the pilot. The pilot has to have the skill to maneuver the helicopter low and slow over varying terrain until he can single out the one animal they want to capture, and then move the net gunner into position so he can safely fire his net over the animal. The third member of the crew is Mike Priest, and it's his first time on a pronghorn capture. Well, how it works for my part, um, I'm, as we're chasing the pronghorn, I'm sitting there looking for obstacles that the helicopter might run into or the pronghorn might run into, and then I hear the, the net gun go off, and the helicopter will swoop around and hover just above the pronghorn, and I'll unbuckle and jump out and make sure the pronghorn's on the ground, cover its eyes, and hold on to it until Larry gets to me, and then he'll, from there he'll put a blindfold on, and uh, we'll start untangling it and put hopples on it, um, and then we'll do the processing, then put a collar on it, ear tag, take its temperature, um, and then let it go. The data the GPS callers will provide is vital to maintain the health of the animals here. It's important so that we can see how the pronghorn are moving relative to both the highways uh, as far as connectivity goes. Uh, fragmentation is a big concern for pronghorn. They don't cross roads very well. The movement data that we're collecting also allows us to make recommendations to the Department of Transportation for when they go to upgrade the interstate to allow them to make mitigations that will get the pronghorn across the interstate in the appropriate spots. We've done it in a number of locations. Uh, we're in varying stages. We've had a lot of success on State Route 260 with elk and uh, a very, very important success as well on US 93 uh, with bighorn sheep. There are about 200 pronghorn that live in Unit 21, and when barriers such as Interstate 17 cut them off from their natural range, it not only prevents them from reaching the resources they need to survive, but it also affects the genetic viability of the herd. It can reduce the subpopulations to a point where there's uh, excessive inbreeding going on, and that can really affect the long-term viability of a population. You can see a lot of detrimental effects popping up uh, from that inbreeding effect, from those inbreeding effects, and you'll, you'll eventually lose each of those sub subpopulations as they become too small for too long. As Arizona continues to grow, so will the connectivity issues for wildlife. That's why the Wildlife Contracts Branch is working with other entities across the state to assure these animals will be here for future generations.